So the topic this week is structured water. And this is something I've been studying uh, personally for the last couple of weeks. And I've, I've, I've studied it on and off for a few years, but the last few weeks I've been really focusing on it because it's a, um, there's been some books that have come across my desk and different studies that have come across my desk that have reignited my interest. And the reason that it's interesting, there's a few reasons that it's interesting. One of which is the fact that according to some scientists, we've been um, misinformed or miseducated our whole lives on water. And if you're like me and like, well, probably most, most of the planet, you probably think, well, water, that's not interesting. You know, we know all there is to know about it water is the basis of life you know water makes up 70 percent of the human being water covers you know two-thirds to three-fourths of the earth water is everywhere so how could we not know everything there's to know about it but surprisingly this book the fourth phase of water by gerald pollack who has studied water for decades describes how we know actually very very little about water especially given its importance to every life on earth and so one of the first things that that we're uh, the first piece of cognitive dissonance you may experience is just reading the title, the fourth phase of water. What? In science class, we were taught that there's three phases of water, right? Solid, liquid, gas. But Dr. Pollack and other researchers through time have found that actually there is a fourth phase of water. And that fourth phase is a gel like state. And you've experienced this we've all experienced this gel-like state in our real lives and what is that state what is the example of the gel state of water jello we've all seen jello if not all eaten jello and jello is the fourth phase of water or a gel-like state and that's the structured state or structured water and that's a very important state as we'll get to but to help you understand it further, there's another author named Thomas Cowan, who is a medical doctor. He's written multiple books, and this is an excellent book I would recommend you read called Cancer and the New Biology of Water. And he, Dr. Cowan talks about his experience as a medical doctor and working in emergency rooms. And, you know, if we're taught that water is three phases, solid, liquid, gas, and the body is 70% water, right? And we all picture what's the, what's the water or the fluid part of the body? A large part of it is blood, right? But if, if blood is truly in liquid phase, then what Dr. Cowan said is, well, then how come when I'm in an emergency room and I see a patient come in with a stab wound or a blood wound, or excuse me, a bullet wound, why aren't there pools of of water on the floor, puddles of water on the floor, just running out of that wound. And the reason is because the water in our bodies is not in the liquid form, it's in the gel form. And so when you stab a body, you don't see tons of water gush out, you see very little, right? You see the very little fluid come out and that's because it's in the gel state and that's the structured state. And that structured state allows for communication to occur from a cell to cell standpoint, from, a, from an inside the cell to an outside the cell standpoint, and from a global standpoint, body-wide. And so many researchers, or, or one researcher from France named Rene uh, Quinton, in the early 1900s, he came up with marine therapy. And he said, listen, if we look at, he observed that if you look at the contents of the blood and what the blood is made up of, the sodium, the potassium, the chloride, the different minerals, and he, if you compare the blood to seawater, essentially our blood, the healthy blood, the healthy um, extracellular fluid in our bodies is equal or equivalent to the same makeup as seawater. And so Rene Quentin began treating patients with seawater IVs essentially. And you can see here, um, uh, where is it? It is, it's talking about in here, but essentially 
uh, Dr. Quentin would use seawater IVs to heal people from all kinds of maladies, from hypertension to diarrhea to um, pediatric issues. And essentially what he did was he, he discovered that seawater matches the healthy blood or the healthy blood matches the makeup of seawater and the healthiest seawater comes from these natural vortexes in the ocean where the water is being vortexed or spun kind of like when you flush your toilet you see the water vortex or spin down there's natural vortices out at various spots in the ocean where uh, the water the seawater is being spun and dr quentin would go off the coast of france there's one of these and he would go and he would sample the water and he found that the healthiest water came from 30 meters deep, which is about 100 feet deep. So they would, he would take water from 100 feet down in this vortex part of the ocean and he would, dis, he would, um, he would basically, distill is the wrong word, but I'm, I'm blanking on the, uh, he, he would um, filter the water, excuse me. He would filter the water down to that, so that's only seawater, the minerals, and uh, certain proteins and things made by the plankton that was in the water. And he would inject that into his patients, and he would see massive improvement in all kinds of uh, maladies in his patients. And so that became known as Quentin's solution or Quentin's plasma. And more generally now, marine therapy is another name for it. And the way that marine therapy works is that it helps promote balanced pH, balanced electrolytes, and balanced electromagnetic charge throughout the body by basically normalizing the, the fluid or the water content in our bodies and providing structured water in our bodies. When the water is not structured, when the structure of the water breaks down, that's what leads to aging and disease and cancer specifically in the top in the book written by Dr. Cowan. He talks about how when the when the structured water becomes entropic or broken down, that leads to poor charge. Poor charge of the water leads to cells clumping together and expanding or growing or proliferating, which is basically the definition of cancer. And so in his book, he talks about we've, we've had 50 years of cancer research with the best scientists in the world. We've had the U.S. governments put $105 billion into cancer research in the last 50 years, and we're doing nothing different essentially today than we were 50 years ago for cancer. And, and the genetic theory of cancer has failed to yield any benefits for patients and any breakthroughs. And so what he's saying is we need to um, take a new approach, look at new things. And one of those things is the health of our water and how structured water plays a role in biological systems and cellular health. And so this is a topic that's been interesting to me. Um, I don't know that I did it the best justice in explaining it to you today. I'm still working my way through it. But the, the one of the take-homes, at least from Dr. Cowan's point of view is that we want to, well, and Dr. Pollux. So from Dr. Cowan's point of view, we want, um, one thing he'd say to do every day is to get, get some of that Quentin's plasma or that Quentin's isotonic water, which is uh, seawater from that vortex water in France and take a tablespoon of that every day. And that promotes um, equilibration of your body's extracellular fluids and promotes optimal charge, optimal cellular health, optimal function. Dr. Pollock, um, he, gives, he gives some things to do as well, like vortexing your water. Personally, there are different uh, vortexing, water vortexers on the market you could purchase to help you do that. He also talks about things like um, possibility of pulsed electromagnetic fields, promoting optimal charge, uh, of your water and structuring the water that way. So these books and these studies open up new understandings of alternative therapies that and why they work um, that haven't been thought of or 
investigated much from a conventional standpoint and probably never will be because there's not a big money pharmaceutical that would come out of this. And if we could heal people with water, you know, the, the pharmaceutical industry would take a giant hit. So it's up to us to do the research for ourselves and, and create that grassroots um, spread of knowledge and information. So I believe uh, that's all I want to say on that. Let's open it up. Well, the last thing I want to say. So if you look at marine therapy, and again, why is water so important for cellular health and, you know, human health? Well, humans are a combination of trillions of cells, right? So if you have a sick human, ultimately that began with a number of sick cells. And when the number of sick cells grows large enough, the human starts to notice. And so we need to promote optimal cellular function. Optimal cellular function requires healthy cellular water. And the two major functions of the cells are energy production and detoxification. And so structured water promotes optimal energy for the cell to do its job for metabolism, to grow and, and, and uh, reproduce or, or go through mitosis. Um, and then detoxification wise, it needs to get rid of it, the waste materials produced by metabolism. So if you have a great metabolic rate, but you're not eliminating the wastes, you could see how that cell would be sick. Just like if a human, um, you know, goes through a lot of exercise and takes in a lot of food, but doesn't eliminate the waste products of those things, that human would be sick in the same way the cell would be sick. So we have to have great cellular metabolism from an energy standpoint. And we also have to have great cellular detoxification. So that cell doesn't become toxic. And so whatever happens on the cellular level eventually is going to hit us on the organismal level or on the whole human level. So we want healthy water.